you. Hi guys. Wow, it's a big call. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna talk about just four to five just really basic things that I feel really propelled my business forward, things that I feel within the last couple of years, because I've been coaching two years last month, that really just made made my business grow. Um, it's kind of changed over time, I guess, just as I've grown, but these things are, you guys have probably heard them, and I feel like we hear things a lot, but they say it takes like eight times or something to, um, for things to actually register and like you process them and actually do them. So, hold on, I have a virus thing popping up. Okay, so you guys know this. I just had a team call with my team cup there like last week or something. Um, and I, and they're all very new coaches. And I, and I was like, okay, I'm going to going to leave this call very, very basic. This is what I want you guys to start doing. And what I told them post, just post, whether that's on your feed, whether that's on your stories, just get something up there. It doesn't even matter when I look back at some of my stuff from two years ago that I was posting. I'm just like, oh my God, what, what are you doing? But it's the same thing. We look back 10 years ago on what we were wearing and we're like, what are you doing? So in the moment it felt right and it felt okay and felt like it was a good thing to post. And you know, obviously it probably was, but now, like I said, I look back on it and I shake my head, but that's the thing guys is just get something up there. People like to just social media is so entertaining. Like you guys know it, you get on social media and you just get on to view people's stories, see what they're up to. And you just want to be entertained. And that's what people are looking for is just to be entertained, have something to look at, have somebody to follow that adds value, whether that's so, I don't know, it was maybe a couple of months ago, I put on my stories, how to wash baseball hats. And I had so many people reach out and go, wait, what? You wash those in a dishwasher? And I'm like, yeah. Like, and people looked at that and they saw that as like, that is so cool. Like I had no idea. I didn't, can't wash them in a washing machine because it'll, it'll ruin the whole baseball uh, back end of it. So just throw something up there, whether it's beautiful or not, people just want to see it. So that's the first thing. The second thing before, when I sit down to work at any time, the very, very first thing that I do is I invite. I don't scroll. I don't check in with my customers. I don't check in with my coaches. I don't post. I don't post on my stories. I just invite because that is the thing that I feel we all put off to like the last, or, or it's something that I've, you know, have put off before and then it just doesn't get done. But that's the only thing that's going to move your business forward is inviting. So before you do anything else, put your phone on air, well, can you put your phone on airplane mode? I guess I don't put my phone on airplane mode and invite, but just, you're going to have, this is the other thing too. You're going to have people reaching back out to you when you are inviting. So let's say you send out your invite and then they say, yeah, I'd like more information. Don't jump on them right away. Like get all those invites done first and then start working on some of those messages that came through. Otherwise you're going to get distracted and then not finish your whole invite process. So that is the second thing. The third thing, this is something I've started doing within the last like three months, sign every single person up as a coach. Now, I wish I would have done this a million years ago because what is happening is nobody, nobody's providing or nobody's kicking back on that. So what I do is when I invite somebody and somebody says, yes, sign me up, I've done it two ways. So the first time I was doing, or like the first month I did this is I sent them a share card and I sent them a voice memo and said, Hey, I'm sure you're seeing that you're checking out as a coach. Like no worries at all. It doesn't, you're not paying any more this first month to be a coach. What this is doing is it's getting you. Cause that was right when MBF came out is when I started doing that. And what it did is it got their products to them much sooner than if they were a customer, they'd have to wait three weeks. So that's kind of how I presented it is just, Hey, like I'm signing you up as a coach just so you get all your stuff before all these customers are going to get their stuff. If you don't want the coaching here in three weeks or whatever, we will go ahead and cancel that. You won't be out anything. You won't be feed anything. And every single person was like, okay. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just sending them a 
share a cart with the coach seat in there and basically just telling them like, you know, I see, hold on, I should turn it off. You know, I'm sure you see that you are signing up as a coach. Same thing. I'm just, I'm just kind of breezing over it. Like it's no big deal. Just like, Hey, in three weeks, we'll kind of talk again and see if you want to continue this. It just saves you money down the road. If you do want to continue, we don't have to go through the whole process of signing up and being billed and all this stuff. So I really just, just breeze over it. So it, like I said, it took me two years to finally do this, but what it also did is you get a bonus for signing up five coaches within, I think it was a five week period. So I've had that twice now. I've gotten a hundred dollars or two, $200 just in bonuses for just signing people up as coaches. And I didn't have to do any extra work for that. Obviously you get your fast start bonus, but then it's fast start bonus plus. And this, yeah, it's just signing people up as coaches. And um, again, it's, I know it's scary. I know it's something that's very intimidating because you're like, don't want to offend people be like, I know you don't want to coach, but I'm signing you up as a coach. Like I just don't even, I don't even give them the option as a customer or to sign up as a customer anymore. I just sign them up as a coach and literally no one has kicked back on that. So um, I can, in the team page after this, kind of send out my wording on how I just kind of breeze over it just so then you guys get a feel for that because I was kind of all over the place with that. So, um, and then the fourth thing, let's see, oh, so I know those of you who have been with me since the beginning, this is something I talk about all the time. And I will talk about it, I think, until my coaching days are done. But check in with your people. And this has really come forth now because, so I tell you, yep. <laughs> so this has really come forth now during qualifications. So I check in with my customers and coaches every single week. Now, when I first started, I only had, let's like two, three people. So I was checking in with them like every day. It was pretty psycho. But what I feel like that does, you guys, is it just really develops that relationship. You really, when you invest your time back in them, they want to, when, so like right now, for instance, I'm going through qualifications. I need my coaches in line. I need favors from customers that will sign up as coaches just to hold the rank. Like when you call in favors, your people are more than willing to do it for you if you are investing that time back in with them. Like they want to see you succeed because you are truly taking that time to invest back into them. So they want to help you. They want to see you succeed. So when you're spending, you know, like I said, I just do it once a week now. Um, I check in with everybody. I kind of just, I space it out now Monday through Friday because sending out, I don't even know how many texts, just one day my inbox gets overwhelmed. So. I like to space out my texts throughout the week um, and check in with everybody, but it really, um, it just really builds that relationship. You guys know that when you're, when you're friends with somebody, if you're communicating with them and talking to them regularly, you want, you want to, you want to help them. You want to see them succeed. You're more than happy to help them out with whatever they need help with. So that is a huge thing for me. And like I said, I will talk about that forever and ever is just pouring back into those investing basically investing in those that have invested in you so um and then the very last thing guys before i pass it on to dana let me take a breath here i know i talk really really fast um so this is one thing that i've noticed in two years of coaching that people look at it as get the get a bad idea or a misconception on like you get rich quick. And you know, some people probably, probably do. I guess I didn't. Um, but you have to think about it this way is you don't ever, let's say you go work as an assistant or a teacher, like you, you don't just show up and then sit on your butt and don't do anything. Right. You, you work, you take the time to work. So it seems like a no brainer, but I feel like that's kind of the some of the kickback that I've gotten is just like, well, I, I didn't realize I had to, you know, work for this and, and spend time doing this, but you have to, and you don't have to spend hours upon hours working this business. Like I started this business when Jax was five months old. Cole was, what was he? A little, let's see, two, a little over two. 
And so think about this, they did not nap at the same time then. I, I don't even, I think I was working the business 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here. And sometimes I would stay up late. Sometimes I would do it in the middle of the night. I don't know. It was just madness, but I wanted it bad enough. And I wanted to inspire people enough and help them that I was willing to take that time to figure out when I could work it. And they, and any of you that work outside of the home, like you guys have to really figure out when you will fit this into the cracks of your, cracks of your day. But if you want it bad enough, like you guys, you have to, you have to find that time. It's not always easy. It's not convenient. Like last week, oh my gosh, last week, I don't know, that might've been an exception because I had no service. So it was really hard to work last week, but there was a night or two that I would drive into town just to get a little bit of service and work. Like just because I knew, just because I want this bad enough that I'm willing to take that extra time and find those times to make this work. And I know you guys know that, but if you do, you, you have to find the time to, to put this in. So I think that's all. And I knocked that out in like 10 minutes, breeze right over that <laughs> real fast. So, um, did anybody ask any questions? Hold on. Yeah, definitely put, um, kind of the script that you say in the team page. I would love, I know you've sent it to me before, but I'd love to see it again, have it somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Cassie? You can put them in the comments or just unmute yourself. Hello, Cassie. It's me. Hi. <laughs> um, I just want to ask, because um, I'm really curious about the signing people up as the coach VIP. So the script would be awesome. But my big question is, have you had any issues come up with that as of thus far um, by doing that? Issues in what sense? As or far what? as like people getting like, how, like what are, what is the conversation that you're having um, like after you sign them up and like, do you just say, we'll check in in three weeks. And then at that point, talk about like the 1595 and the discount or when do you add that information in? So, so I, my newer people, I check in with them, obviously at least that once, once a week, if not maybe a couple times a week. Yes. But when, so this is kind of on us as coaches to make sure we see when they are up for renewal. Like I have it written down. Yes. Sometimes I, you know, I'm making sure I'm checking the back office, but you want to make sure you're on top of that because if yeah. they get charged at 1595, you said they want to get charged for, they're going to be so mad. Right. So it's on. So I take the, the initiative myself to make sure I'm on top of that. Like saying, Hey, we're, you know, we're at this week. What are you thinking? Do you love your products? Do you want to give this like at least another month to try some new products. Do you want to just cancel it all together? Do you want to tiptoe into the business thing? I can send you some things like just leave it on them. If they say, no, I don't want products. I don't want anything. Then I'm like, all right, here's this form. Here's this form. Let's cancel this. We can, we can redo it at any point. If you decide you want more. Um, I usually tell them too. I was I kind of sneak this in. Like before you cancel, if you want to try anything, order it right now, because you're a coach, it's cheaper than if you go fall back to customer, just put, put an order through right now. So that was the other thing guys too. When I'm in Paul's now, like I don't have to, like, I don't have to rely on my existing coaches besides my diamonds, of course, but I don't have to rely on my existing coaches to like call in favors for them to put like an order through if they order like once every three months kind of thing, because I have those those new customers coming in as coaches that are just stacking my legs. And so they just like cycle through and I don't have to worry about, I mean, I could, I guess, reach out to, to my coaches that are already there, but that just kind of helps that cushion of qualifications. It's just signing people up as coaches. So they're just, they're placeholders for at least three weeks. So that's another good thing about that too. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, there was a few other questions in the chat, but I've been trying to answer them. Um, but just to address Kylie's question, if there's, so how do you get customers switched over to coaches without the $40 fee? They will have to pay it initially, but there's a form, like there's a form that they can fill out after they sign up to be a coach. 
but they need their coach ID to fill it out. So that's why like kind of to Cassie's point, like why mess with that? If they're going to become a coach, like why not start them off at the beginning? So then you don't have to go to the process of like, okay, sign up to be a coach. They're going to bill you $40. Okay. Let's get that $40 back. It just kind of, so that makes sense. Anything else for Cassie? That was all really, really good stuff. And you can never hear those things enough. <laughs> All right, we'll just keep putting any questions in the chat as we go, but Dana, you are up, my dear. All right, hey guys, so I made it home. Thank goodness, it was a Walmart grocery pickup saga, but anyway, I'm here. Um, again, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be a broken record. <laughs> So if you have heard me talk before, I apologize, kind of like Cassie said at the beginning, um, but I'll share a little bit why there's this broken record feeling. So I have like three tips and I'll elaborate on them a little bit for you guys tonight. Um, I kind of feel like they're a little bit more broad, but I hope that they kind of help you kind of understand where you are. I have also been coaching, um, I think for two years, a little over two years actually, but actively coaching since December of 2018. So about a year and a half. Um, anyway, so my first tip for you guys is, Brooke kind of touched on it in the chat, kind of goes with what Cassie said, is consistency. Um, and when I talk about consistency, I mean in those really boring Okay, not necessarily boring, but those behaviors that get you started from the very beginning and doing them consistently. And when I mean consistently, I mean, if you want to get to two star, it's going to have to be every day. It can't be that you consistently do it a couple times a week. Um, or you only invite one week and then not the next. You need to do those actions that worked in the very beginning regularly. Um, and I have had some major ebbs and flows in my business. And when I talk about these actions, I guess I'm primarily referring to the, bu um, the business activity tracker actions. So like um, connecting, expanding your market, inviting product of the product, committing to a program, um, checking in with your challengers, checking in with your coaches, checking in with your groups. Like that's most of it off the top of my head. Um, and doing those things every single day. And that doesn't necessarily mean doing them um, for hours. Because in the beginning, that first full year that I got to Diamond, I was doing those things for an hour a day in a lot smaller increments. And you know, I didn't like get to diamond in a month or anything crazy like that, but it's it worked for me at the time. And because I did it every day and consistently, it compounded over time. Um, and you know, that first diamond's like kind of hard to get to, but you'll learn as you go. Like, I felt like I got Aaron there way faster once I committed to my husband's account to diamond. Um, so doing those actions and you build this like solid foundation of those actions consistently, they will compound, they will be get, come easier. Um, I know Brooke and I have mentioned that before, like those, some of those actions just that like, come so quickly and naturally to me, I can get them done in half the time I used to get them done. Um, but don't forget though. Uh, Brooke, you have like a second. Okay, there it goes. Um, never mind. It wasn't, yeah. Um, but don't forget those actions. So what I was going to say is I've kind of had some ebb and flows in my business. Um, and I think they come with growth for me that I forget those actions. I'm going to be like super vulnerable with that. And I don't do those things regularly and it affects my business. It affects my growth. Um, it affects my team. It affects my customers. And so just don't forget what worked for you in the beginning. And if you're a brand new coach, like then start taking action now with those actions so that they can compound for you over time. Um, I know, I remember I've heard so many times that the top, top coaches, they say they're still doing the same things. Like Megan has said this, that we didn't. I know in Megan's business, not to like bring her into this, like she had to go back to those things because they were things that she had stopped doing a little bit of. So just those simple actions every day, all the time. Um, not all the time, but you know what I mean? Every day consistently. So the consistency is my first tip. And then my second tip is to go first in your business. Um, this one, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit more about rank advancing at the end of my time here, but to go first in rank advancements on your team. So some of you here are probably not even an Emerald yet, and that's okay. But at some point you have to make that decision. And that's kind of a, kind of another topic for another call. 
Um, but you know, if you're on the fence, I've heard a lot of people lately say like, they're just not ready to sign up their spouse. Well, like if you want to be anything more than a coach, a ho very hobby coach with like no people under you, that's okay. But if you want to be anything more than that, you need to sign up a spouse or somebody right there. Like that's black and white. And I, it's a trust thing. You basically, you signed up with us as a customer. You signed up with us as a coach. You need to trust in that. You need to make that first rank advancement. Sure, you don't have a team yet, but that's your first step. Okay, off my emerald pedestal. But then moving forward is you need to go emerald again and again and talk about it to your team. You need to be that example for your team. This is in my business. I love my team, but we kind of, I felt really stunted where we were and I made some really big moves. I, I needed an emerald to hold my diamond because I dropped my diamond. This was after we hit elite in January. I had not held my diamond for like several months after we finally hit elite. And I'm like, this is just like, it can't be. And I, we were going to try to get to another qualification as a team. And, and I wanted that diamond. Like I knew I could do it. And I, so I made my mom an emerald. I went first and guess what? I popped several emeralds on the same side as my mom within like two weeks. I went first, I showed them it's not that hard. It's not that scary. Okay. Um, I did it again when I decided, when I committed to push um, my husband's account to, to diamond, um, I decided, you know what, at the end of this year, 2020, I will at least be one star. And um, I mean, I, I speak a lot bigger dreams and goals than that into my team. But I committed a couple months ago. I said, I'm pushing for one star with Aaron's account. So basically, whoever wants to go with me, like, let's go. I'm not saying I'm going to spoon feed you. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm just saying I'm going. So who wants to come with me? I declared that rank advancement first. And actually, Kelsey beat me to it. <laughs> so she went diamond before I got Aaron to diamond, which is awesome. Like that, it, to me, is like, that was my first, like, big coach to rank advance. And I finally understood, like, I was more excited for her. I didn't even like, it took me oh, like an hour to be like, oh my gosh, that means that I'm one star. Like I'm in, like, I truly like, and I like to win you guys. Like I say this on probably every call, like rank advancements, like fire me up and like maybe too much. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. And um, so like for that, for me to be so excited for her was like a really big deal for me. Um, and it just really showed how much I loved like equipping others to do it. But sometimes that means going first to show them what's possible. Um, so go first. And then the last thing I wanted to share was to work with the working. And basically, I mean, don't put your eggs in anybody's basket. Um, I, when I was wanting to really build a team, basically this year, I set some really big goals at the beginning of 2020. I kind of felt like, um, I thought I had my people, I guess you could say. And those people are still there and they are still my people. If you've read any of Josh Code's books, like um, everybody has a place on the team or in the stands or, you know, there's so many positions, um, but you can't just count on one person to do something or put that pressure on them or that expectation. They have to want it. They have to want to do the work. We cannot make people show up every day for an hour or more. Okay, we can't make people get out of their comfort zones. We can provide all the tools and all the resources and all the trainings, but if they're not putting in the actions, they're not going to move forward. And I, that, was a, that was a fault of mine in the beginning. I, anybody that said they wanted to work, I was like, okay, let's do it. Like, ah, I got a person, I have somebody, they're here. Like, and then I just, I realized, but if they're not going to show the actions, like I can't keep putting my eggs in those baskets. And so I actually, the beginning of 2020, when I wrote my vision, that is actually in my, I have like a family vision statement and a business vision statement. And it is, I am working with the working. And that's like my five-year plan. Like I am making X amount of money, working X amount of hours a day. Aaron is home from teaching and I'm working with the working. Like that is how important that statement is to me because I found it was, um, our time is so precious and I love people and I love connecting with people and I love helping them, but you also have to guard your time and guard your energy. And so working with the working was huge for me. So, um, what that looked like for me was kind of, I made a message pod. It's my virtual gem leaders. I really need to expand on it because some of us are working more than others or pushing for bigger ranks and goals. And I'm not saying certain people are not valuable members of our team still, 
Um, but there's just always a revamping of who's working for what. So finding ways that that works for your team. So um, message pods, message pods have been really great for my team. Basically, it just started with one pod. I messaged every single coach I had under me. This was like in March. So after team cup, I think every single person, even people that had told me strictly discount, I said, I'm creating this group for leaders of our team that maybe want to learn more, do more with the business. And so we created this message of like eight of us and it's just been a great way to communicate. Now, like I said, I need to work on kind of branching that off into different areas. Um, but that's just one really easy, small way to kind of get that going with working with the working team cup or kind of missed that point. But that was how I got people to start working and realize who wanted to work. So I had two teams, probably eight people. And I would say, um, five of them came out as maybe like somewhat working coaches. I'm not saying we're trying to weed people out, but it showed me where to put my energy, where to put my efforts. Um, so that was the last thing I wanted to share. And then I just wanted to finish that Cassie and I kind of talked about this earlier today is this is like, I know this is, I think a topic for a call this month, so I won't get way too much into it, but, um, knowing your vision and your purpose and your why is like, it's a non-negotiable. You can't say, I want to be a two-star diamond coach if you don't have a reason why you want to do that. And I'm going to just be really blunt, like helping people is not enough. I would not show up every day and pour right now three to four hours into this just because I want to help people with their health and fitness. Well, like that's awesome. And I love it. That's not guarding my time. That's not guarding my family's time. That's not guarding my future. That's not really doing much for us. And so that's why it's so important to have that vision statement and that why of why you're here and what you want from it. Um, and so, well, like rank advancements. So two star, like Brooke touched on it in the beginning. I heard it while I was getting out of my car, um, was really big for me. And I re this is why I made a really big, I made some big moves to hit two star guys and I'm not going to throw them all out here right now, but let's just say I made it happen. Like physically made it happen. Um, because income is my goal. Income is my goal. My husband starts school tomorrow. And I said to him tonight, I said, I hope this is your last, last day of summer break ever because I hope he doesn't have to go back next year. And so oh God, I didn't expect this part. And so income is my goal. So I need that third business center. And so like, I knew I had to build up leaders. So I had a leader that built up and so she's there and I have more and I know I'll get that third business center. And I know next year, like we have some really big goals and I, I know we'll be there. And like his, he's like, mm -hmm. I mean, he believes in me, but he just, he's a guy and he likes to be the breadwinner. So maybe he just doesn't like the fact that I'm going to bring him home. But anyway, and just like having like that, that's so big for me that like that I will come every day and I will show up every day, even if it's just an hour, because my vision and my why is so big. And if you don't know yours yet, then you need to peel away the layers to find it. Because I didn't know that that was mine. I thought like I wanted to make a little money so I didn't have to find a job. Well, why don't I want to find a job? I don't want to find a job because I want to be home forever. Why do I want to be home? Well, I want to be home because Aaron wants to be home and I want to be home together. And I just like started peeling away those layers till I found what deep down we wanted for our family. And when I found it, like there's nothing that will stop it. So rank advancing was a part of that. But at the same time, like Cassie and I, like we kind of have a chat today. Like I also have to look at, I have increased my income. I am almost to my goal for this year already. So even if I would drop rank, I've still impacted lives. I've still hit goals like increasing my income. So you need to have, you can't put all your eggs in a rank advancement basket is kind of the last thing I wanted to say with that. Um, but to start is huge. And I heard not very many months ago, if you want to have a full-time income, you have to get to two star. So put my head down and I just, I did it. Hopefully. I don't know if we're going to hold it or not. Hopefully we are, we're going to hold it. <laughs> Either way, though, like I said, I've hit other goals that are still leading me to where I want to be. So, wow, I didn't expect that. Sorry. Um, those are my tips for you guys tonight. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Dana. Killing me. Definitely made me tear up. But does anyone have questions for Dana? That was really good. 
It's a lot of good stuff. And I will make sure to post this recording on the team page so you can watch it again tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I love that peel the layers back too because I know when I got in to be a coach, like my goal was like, I just, I don't want to go back to teaching. And now it's way bigger than that because got to work on it though and it's it's okay if you're like I don't know why I want to be a coach like I think that's okay but you do need to dig into it if you want to make make big moves um and just so you guys know like I just like feel like this needs to be shared too I didn't say at the beginning of this call like Dana and Cassie really our whole team but especially these two right now like have been through the ringer this year or like, you know, Cassie touched on it briefly, but she's like in the midst of that. I don't even know how to say it, that derecho. Is that how you say it? Derecho where like she didn't have power, running water, all of that stuff last week, like craziness. And then Dana, if you didn't know, she had a house fire. She's been living at her parents. Like there's a lot of hard things they're going through. So like these leaders are making it happen and they're using their hard for good. Like they're not sugarcoating things. They're not like making everything rainbows and butterflies and showing their shake and energized and their perfect workout and their perfect abs. Like they're showing the hard and they're showing the messy and they're showing like their real self. And that's why they are doing what they're doing because people gravitate towards that. They gravitate towards their realness and their heart for others. So thank you ladies so much. Like I needed that call this week this week. So does anyone else have any questions? Reading books. Alrighty. Well, if not, we're going to wrap it on up. Thank you so much, Danny and Cassie. You guys are awesome. And we're going to kick these next six weeks in the butt. Well, it's like five weeks now. Right? So, okay. See you guys.